Just like kale, trail running, yoga, and kittens, this little camera has very much surprised me at just how much I like it. I had a few weeks to use this camera before agreeing to do this video, and now that I have quite a bit of experience with it, I feel good about publishing this. This video is a mix of review and advertisement, and I'll make it clear throughout which bits are part of an ad paid for by DJI. Hello everyone, I love mountain biking, and if you've watched my videos for the last, oh, half dozen or more years, you've seen a ton of actual onboard riding footage from a small action camera, usually on my chest or my tummy, made from our friends over at GoPro. This is a beautiful mountaintop. I think it's gonna be good on a bicycle too. <laughs> The GoPros have been great over the whole bunch of last years, and I still use quite a bit all my GoPro cameras. Recently, I got an email from the company that I know because they make the drones that I use once in a while, asking if I could do a video all about their Action 4 point of view camera for mountain biking. This video is an ad, but let's check out this camera and see if it is indeed a viable competitor to GoPro. Let's take a look. In 2024, GoPro cameras are about as ubiquitous on the trail as e-bikers running out of battery. Everyone and their dog has an action cam, but why? Well, whatever the brand, an action cam is the easiest, least intrusive way of capturing memories from the trail. Using a real camera or even an iPhone on the side of the trail shows the bike, the riding, and maybe even some terrain features. But the POV look shares the feel much more so. It captures the speed, the bouncing of the bike, and the general feeling of flow all quite well. But best of all, you don't need to stop and interrupt the ride, turning it from fun into a film fest. I really enjoy a lot of POV footage, but for reference, here's an example of third-person footage, and here's an example of action cam footage. My use of the action cam is now generally B-roll for videos, but I also film family stuff to share privately. All right, got a bunch of things here. Uh, we have the ND filter set, which is cool if you live someplace really, really sunny and you want to use a very slow shutter speed for maximum blur. Where I live in the Northwest, we see the sun about 14 days a year, so I'm probably not gonna use these, but I might travel or they might log more of the forest, in which case these could be helpful. Let's back up. Your use and my other use for all this is sharing memories with friends and family. Scan the QR code to download DJI Mimo and connect to camera unit to activate. I guess I should do the Mimo. See you guys. Sharing your footage is a huge obstacle. Everyone has billions of hours of footage that is just festering on an old SD card or hard drive somewhere. Just like a beef salad, the worst part of this is getting through all the pointless raw greens to finally savor those good bits of footage when that elk might have jumped right out in front of you. The tedious process of finding, exporting, and sharing the stuff that's worth remembering is a huge barrier for all of us. I was just telling Evelina how you gotta not use the brakes hard on the roots. I'm trying to remember myself. The hot setup is to simply connect your phone to your action cam, use the camera company's app, and find the footage you want, then exporting it to your camera roll. For all this, DJI's user experience is quite good. The Mimo app was fairly intuitive and is absolutely on par with the main competitor. Definitely Things were organized slightly here. differently, but I was able to figure this all out and start exporting clips pretty quickly. When exported, I could then text the video clips as long as they were about 55 seconds or shorter. The app only crashed a couple of times, and overall, I'd say it's slightly better than GoPro's app. It's evident that DJI is a larger company and has significant resources when it comes to this part of the overall experience. This is an ad. <laughs> I saw Casey Neistat do that once and I still watch his videos. He's like, you know what? The way he does the ad is probably pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. Open accessories and action four. About similar size to what I'm used to using. Tighten the lens protective cover before taking in water. I don't normally mountain bike underwater, but if I do, I'll tighten lens protector. On the trail, I found the Action 4 to be minimally intrusive. I admit I fussed with it less than I do my GoPro. Let's hit a few sponsored items. The instant on recording feature boots up in what DJI claims is three tenths of a second. I call it faster than forgetting to avoid that front brake in a corner. Every time. DJI also has an exclusive 60 second pre-recording option, though I did not try that. The overall form factor features a 90% larger sensor, yet a 6% weight reduction. And that's in comparison to a GoPro Hero 12. Back to the review. The quick release attachment for the camera to the chest harness was great. I'd say it's easier to use than GoPros. 
The harness itself is not as comfortable as the GoPro, though it did have a cool option for a rearward angle. This angle is neat, but it's not something you'll use more than once or twice, ever. Do you want to wear the action camera harness? Yeah, yeah. This way you can go outside, and if the neighbors find you, they'll know you're my cat. There you go. Oh, he's doing pretty good in it. There you go. That's not your belly rubbing the ground, Rocco. That's the strap. Oh, he's stepping on it. Oh, he's, that wasn't, he lasted in that for a whole while there. Oh, this is super chill and really cool. For mounting, I always do chest cam. This creates great footage that's minimally intrusive. I mostly do cross country rides where a full face oh, helmet really doesn't make much sense. The handlebar mounts are good if you're going to do some vlogging, but I never filmed forward from the bars, so I didn't really try those. My camera settings are to run the Action 4 in the 4K resolution and in 24 frames per second. This allows for a slight bit of motion blur, keeps the trail more stabilized, and also lets in a bit more light for our extremely dark trails up here. Then I run the lens in the widest possible field of view. I run the camera's internal stabilization at its lowest stabilized level, what DJI calls rock solid. I tried the higher settings, but they cropped the image in too much for good mountain biking video. All the footage in this video here is filmed as such, unless specifically labeled as not. Here is some example of the more heavily this stabilized way, footage. Yeah. Ooh, that sounded good. Did you guys hear that? It doesn't sound as good the second, third, and fourth times. Diminishing returns. This system looks very similar to what we're all familiar with. When using the included camera cage, you can easily convert it from horizontal to vertical video. Oh, I got a stick. I've been wanting to get one of these for a while. Riley's been loaning me his 360 camera and I've been meaning to learn how to do the 360 thing where you influence with the thing. It'd be sweet to do that, but I'm too busy doing videos to learn how to make videos. No. It turns on faster than a GoPro. Yeah. This little bit's a little bit, a little bit dicey. Holy smokes, DJI packed a serious punch into these little batteries. I have been challenging myself to only bring one battery on most normal rides, and that's been plenty. I'd say it's on par, if not better than, the competition. Yeah, now, let's jump. hit some sponsored must munchin features for DJI. DJI be. claims 160 minutes of recording time in an unspecified setting, and 90 minutes in 4K60. I did not time battery life, but it's better than I expected. That same battery does charge really fast. Great. DJI claims 80% charge happens in 18 minutes. I will say it's impressive how quick it charges. I wish it were still ski season because DJI claims the battery works from minus four to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. I only use the camera during spring conditions, so I did not test that. Back to the review. The camera itself functions the same way as the GoPro does. In my case, I leave the camera off, then I can hit the quick record button on the top and it turns the camera on while simultaneously beginning to record. The tones it plays are different than GoPro and a bit excessive, but I feel the Action 4 turns on and initiates recording a little bit sooner and more consistently. Now let's hit another sponsored bit. The DJI Action 4 has a user experience that is well tailored to the needs of a mountain biker. Okay, now that we have that done, I don't want to endorse something I don't truly like, so I agree with this statement. Nice work, DJI. So for the chest mount, you can put it Oh, that's so you can film your bro behind you. Or if you're on an e-bike, you can film your peasant friend as they fall off the back on your climb. The look of the video footage is great. A big part of this is due to the giant one and 1.3 inch sensor that actually measures 10 by seven and a half millimeters. The GoPro Hero 12 sensor is a bit smaller at only 6.3 by five and a half mils. Let's include a quick sponsored statement here. A top of line one slash 1.3 inch sensor paired with a new low light image enhancement mode Action 4 masters both bright and dim conditions with ease. The industry's widest 155 degree FOV expands your riding for truly immersive footage with less distortion. Back to the review. The wide angle is good, but that only works on the lowest stabilization. While the DJI may be slightly better than GoPro in low light, still neither one's great. Sure, DJI's sensor is bigger and sometimes the picture might be better and sometimes I really can't tell a difference. We're at the point of marginal gains here, but bit by bit, over the years, this constant improving and one-upmanship certainly gets all these cameras a lot better. Anyone here remember the old Hero 8? That was still pretty good. But as we all play this game, things definitely do keep improving. Now, I don't use any sort of flat color profiles. I feel the stock colors for DJI are plenty good for my needs. As they say, don't let perfect get in the way of published. But really, I have an opinion here. No one really watches videos just for the video quality. They watch for the story, the action, the content. That comes from a mix of acceptable picture, great audio, and an overall cohesive reason to watch. But I'm certainly happy with DJI's image quality. 
Ever since GoPro announced the Hero 7 back in 2018, we've been somewhat spoiled with really good stabilization without an external gimbal. However, here in the dark northwest, I have generally continued using a gimbal until only last year. The Hero 11 finally started to have acceptable stabilization and low lighting conditions on our trails. But there's a catch. We don't really have the needed light to run even GoPro's best, most stable settings. The secret is to run the lowest level of stabilization, only one notch above zero. I did find I had to do that same trick with DJI. The caveat with the DJI is that as you increase the stabilization, it zooms in a bit, losing the necessary wide angle field of view. But that's okay, the plain old rock solid provides enough stabilization to create crisp, watchable footage with enough jitter to show how bumpy the riding experience actually is. Now for the sponsored plug, DJI's rock solid feature provides amazingly steady footage. Okay, let's move on. And then if you wanna hear good quality audio in my videos, you might know that I take audio seriously and they sent a set of uh, DJI Mic 2s. I already owned a pair of these and I like them. They're, they're pretty good. I use them for more of the uh, vloggy stuff, riding with other people, hanging out stuff. Oh God, this looks steep today. Why does it look steep? We all know action cameras are not great at recording audio, but this is one of my favorite things about the Action 4. The audio has actually been better than expected. The wind noise is the hardest thing to mitigate, but somehow DJI does the best job I've seen thus far at this. I used to drag a professional audio recorder and lav mic every time I'd run a GoPro, but with the Action 4, I felt comfortable leaving that at home. Now for another sponsored bit. With direct Bluetooth connection to DJI Mic 2, capturing high quality audio is more convenient Not something I have the patience for when I'm going minimalist. When I do use the mic 2 units for recording, I always run a lav mic to my collar with a fuzzy little dead cat. This does work well, but I reserve that for shoots where I'm putting in max effort. To be honest, this compatibility is not something the average user will really want to deal with. I did experience fewer operating bugs and errors with DJI and its app than I do with GoPro, which is a good example of DJI being a larger company and having as extra additional resources. When it comes to editing the footage on your computer, the DJI files are the usual MP4 type. However, DJI appears to record in a higher bitrate and file sizes are way bigger than what GoPro uses. Neither was a challenge for my M2 Max equipped Mac computers to edit, but the gluttonous files did engorge my storage requirements. Now, the storage is a bit bloated. I can't record as much riding to each SD card as I can with the GoPro. Even the 5K mode in GoPro feels more lean than the 4K in the DJI. It's not been a massive problem, but for a multi-day road trip, I would certainly bring spare cards for the Action 4, whereas I might attempt to use fewer spare cards with the GoPro. Also, the cap for the USB-C port popped off and I could not get it back on. Now it's lost. My cats have been playing with it somewhere and I'll probably never see it again. As a consumer, it's easy to get hyped up on all sorts of extra features, but in reality, you probably won't use those. I will say the vertical video mode is incredibly easy to use and is probably the best selling point for this camera overall. Sponsor DJI statement that this is the industry first magnetic quick release, top tier, user friendly, easily unlocked with gloves on. What? Okay, moving on. I also never use the Action 4 as a camera for things like unboxing or interviews. I guess it could work for that, but I'm more accustomed to my SLR for that. I also did not experiment with taking stills or time lapses. Here's why. As a YouTuber for six years now, I rarely ever do more with an action cam than record action. That's what they're great at. Use them for what they are intended. If you set it up for a time lapse, chances are you're gonna forget it's in time lapse mode and you're gonna blow your next action shot. I try to just leave things to do what they're intended to. As for pricing, DJI tells me the Action 4 is $299 and the GoPro 12 is $399. In reality, they are both $299. Okay, thank you all so much for watching my video. Let me know in the comments below if you found this video helpful. I'm also open to feedback. I don't do many videos sponsored by the brand being featured. Were you able to decipher my own opinions from the marketing spiel? As always, please do hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Peace and wheelies, everyone.